Hi and welcome everybody to my latest gadget. I call this an unconventional timer. And the idea for this gadget came about from one of the videos I did previously on a combination lock. And in that video I had a combination lock that was controlled or unlocked by a number of pins. So we had a lift arm being held by a number of pins that could be moved. And each of these pins was on a uh, separate combination lock reel and you had to line up. Uh, you had to get the four reels correct in order to be able to release the lock. So for example, you have to keep turning the pins and have the lift arm pop out like that. Now I thought it would be interesting to use this very same idea and actually use a motor to turn all the pins and after enough time of turning the lift arm would be released and therefore the timer would be up. So what I've done in this design is I've got a main axle here that's driven by the motor and that axle drives each of the crankshafts uh, which in turn drive the pins. And I've used a different gearing ratio between each of the crank shafts in order to drive the pins at different speeds. And so what that means is that as they turn in and out like this, uh, you need exactly 15 turns of the main axle in order for these uh, pins to line up again and be able to release uh, the timing mechanism. Now in general if you add more uh, pins and more gearing ratios then the number of turns that you have to turn uh, the axle is the product of all the different gearing ratios provided they don't have any common factors. If they do have common factors then that has to be divided out. So in general it's simply the um, least common or uh, the lowest common multiple of all the gearing ratios used for the different pins. Okay so I'll now show you the gadget that I've built that's based on that idea. Uh, so at the bottom here we've got the main axle that's driven by the motor. Uh, that axle then drives through different gearing ratios the crankshafts that you can see at the top. The crankshafts have the pins that move in and out in this direction and that locks and unlocks this main uh, lift arm that can move up and down once the timer has been completed. Now of course the timer is completed once all the uh, pointers line up uh, and that indicates that the timer is now completed. Now originally I had this just being pulled down by gravity but that wasn't really enough so what I've done is I've added a pullback motor over here uh, which can set the tension that's being pulled down on this crankshaft you can change the tension simply by undoing this and tensioning the um, pullback motor spring in here so you just got to get the right tension so it's not too strong and not too weak and this red lift arm just stops that from popping out so what I've got around the back here is quite a nifty wee feature and that is a remote controller that will automatically turn off the timer uh, once the time's up and turns off the motor. So that is done through the lift arm that moves up and down. As you can see as the lift arm pops down it turns off the remote control which then in turn turns off the motor through the infrared receiver. The different gearing ratios are implemented at the back. Uh, so at the bottom I've got an 11 to 1, here I've got a 7 to 1, and here I've got a 5 to 1, and finally a 3 to 1. So what that means is that the timing mechanism won't be released until the main axle turns the product of those numbers, which is 1155 times. In order to start the timer what we need to do is to pull up the lift arm over here. We need to manually turn the main axle in order to bring the pins across, and that will lock in place the lift arm over here. At that point at the back the remote has now been turned on so the motor is ready to go. And we can start the timer. Let's go. Okay, time's up. Now unfortunately there is a flaw in my design. You may have noticed that the bottom indicator wasn't pointing fully to the top when the timer popped. The reason for that is, is that the pin is actually fully retracted already when the crankshaft is only at about 45 degrees to the horizontal. So what that means is that in practice the timer um, doesn't rotate the full 1155 turns uh, that would otherwise be needed. Uh, now I do have an idea around that. Uh, you can add another pin that is geared 2 to 1 to the 11 to 1, uh, which would mean we'd have another pin 
which would still be holding the lift arm even though this one is close to the uh, below the 45 degrees thanks for watching hope you enjoyed the video and please like and subscribe and we'll see you next time